Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mole Hill Mountain, episode 221, I think. 221? Yes, okay. Good. 221. That makes all the difference in the world. So, I'm Andrew Eisen. Welcome. Hello, David. All right, what are we going to talk about tonight? Um, hey, you remember last year where uh, CD Projekt Red said uh, multiple times that it wasn't going to crunch and the uh, higher-ups promised that they weren't going to crunch? And then I think it was Bloomberg who pointed out that, oh, they were crunching. Ooh, boy, were they crunching. So much crunch. And then the uh, uppity-ups at CD Projekt Red who uh, deliberately and knowingly lied about crunch apologized for deliberately and knowingly lying about crunch. Well, um, even with all that crunch, CD Projekt Red's uh, Cyberpunk 2077 was an absolute unmitigated disastrous launch. And uh, ate through a serious chunk of the uh, credibility that company had uh, garnered from uh, the very well-received Witcher 3. So I guess Crunch doesn't save you from that. Well, uh, CD Projekt Red uh, put out a little video this week uh, in which it said among other things, but the thing that stood out to me was uh, the team is working to bring relevant fixes to the game without any obligatory overtime, avoiding crunch on all of our future projects is one of our top priorities. Yeah, we see what you're doing there. In other words, uh, People who work at uh, CD Projekt Red can expect to crunch. I mean, it's a top priority, but that doesn't mean they're going to meet that priority. They might fall short. You know, it's a priority, but you know, sometimes you just got to buckle down and crunch the hell out of your employees. So, uh, that's something that uh, stood out in the little four or five minute video that they put out. Mm. Hey there, Kageneko-sama. That's a fun name. I like that name. Lindy, hello. So let's move on from CD Projekt Red, who I don't like anymore and is no longer on my Christmas card list. Mm-hmm. And talk about more fun things. So, um, Capcom released a little teaser for Resident Evil 8 in the village. Um, uh, so, they're going to show off more of that next week, I believe. Uh, but in this uh, video, they showed off the very pale woman in the white dress and really big hat, who we've seen in earlier trailers. Um but showed that she appears to be about twice as tall as her buddies. Now, I looked at this, and, and the, the internet is loving this, like, oh my gosh, look at this giant vampire woman. She's awesome. And I, and I agree, I, I like the design. I think she's really cool looking. Love the hat. Um, but my thought was, like, did, did, did you all miss the first trailer in which... She's clearly towering above <laughs> all her buddies because it, it feels like a lot of people missed that. Um, you know, I, I watched the little teaser. I'm like, oh, yeah, cool. I'll, I'll tune in next week or whenever it is. But uh, a lot of folks are, did you see the giant vampire woman in the awesome hat? She's so tall. I'm like, yeah, did you see the first trailer? She's in that one, too. Standing next to, like, two or three other people. And she's significantly taller than them. Now, to be fair, uh, there's two shots of her, I think, in this trailer. Uh, this little teaser. Uh, one is her ducking through a doorway. 
And you might be thinking, well, Mr. X ducked through a doorway to, uh, you know, chase you in the Resident Evil 2 remake. Oh, sure. But Mr. X pretty much cocked his head to the side to, to get through a door. She has to pretty much limbo <laughs> to get through a door. She's so damn tall. She like com completely, I'm sorry, completely bends at the waist to get through a door. Also, the other shot of her is done from this weird, uh, like she's, you know, taking a selfie. Um, which makes her look, it makes this shot look like it could be a forced perspective. Like you look at it and you're thinking, is she really twice as tall as everyone else? Or is that a weird per for first uh, forced perspective? And I went back and I looked at the original trailer and in that, uh, the shot you see her in, uh, the one where she's standing next to other people anyway, it looks like she's a head or so taller than, um, everyone else. But that's a low angle shot. So that in and of itself could be another weird perspective that makes her look that belies just how much taller she is because her friends could be closer to the camera than she is. You can't really tell. So she may be significantly more than a head taller than everyone. I think the fact that she bends at the waist to get through a doorway <laughs> is a pretty a good indication of, um, how towering she really is. Hello, Sean. Uh, nevertheless, um, I like me my Resident Evil games. Even the bad ones. Boulder punching including, included. And um, I'm... I... You know... Even when it's... Even when Resident Evil is bad, it's still pretty good so you know i'm feeling pretty confident about resident evil villages uh chances so yeah i'm definitely looking forward to more but let us move on to other topics and the other topics we shall move on to include i didn't write down the full name so now i'm trying to think of it uh super mario 3d world plus bowser's fury so um Super Mario 3D World is a great game, but it was on the Wii U, so only I played it. And the, you know, multiple millions of other people who had a Wii U. But not enough millions. Uh, really good game, uh, and I'm very glad that it's being released on a console that more people have so that it can be enjoyed by more people. But I have a gripe, and this gripe stems purely from selfishness. And that gripe is uh, the Bowser's Fury portion of uh, Super Mario 3D World, which is new to the Switch release of the game, looks really, really cool. And I want to play it because it looks really, really cool. But my desire to play it is not enough to get me to drop $60 on a game I already bought seven or eight years ago and played to completion. And that makes me sad. Because I want to play Bowser's Fury. It looks cool. Um, this has happened uh, several times. Uh, throughout the Switch's life, a uh, one of the many awesome Wii U games gets ported to the uh, system with the uh, uh, larger audience and uh, is plussed. Uh, Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE, whatever it's called, has some additional content. Still censored, but it has some additional concert, uh, content. Um, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Another great game, came to the Switch and had a couple extra uh, levels in there. Awesome. I didn't get to play them. Because I already, I already bought the game, already played the game. I'm not buying the entire game again just for the extra little content. But wouldn't it be super cool? So cool. This would be cool. Wouldn't it be so cool if the... Um, 
extra content of these games, like Bowser's Fury, were re okay. Um, were released. Uh, that's distracting. I should probably turn my phone off and you know throw it over there. Um, the hell was I talking about? Wouldn't it be awesome if re-releases with bonus content rewarded? The supporters of the game, the longtime support, the people who bought the Wii U, the people who bought these games, if they were made available to us. Now, it'd be super cool if it was free as a thank you. But I am so gosh darn generous that I would be perfectly willing to pay what I consider a reasonable price for Bowser's Fury standalone DLC. I have no idea how extensive it is, so I, I don't know what a reasonable price would be. Five bucks, ten bucks? I don't know. Um, one buck? Is it, is, it, is it like 20 minutes of content? Who the hell knows? I have no idea. But um, I would love to play Bowser's Fury. I'm not dropping 60 bucks on a game I've already purchased and played, but I would buy standalone DLC. Nintendo. So, I mean, you could release it standalone. You'd make a little more money. I don't know if that would ops offset the resources and cost it would take to make it available as a standalone uh, uh, piece of work. Uh, but as it stands now, you're getting zero from me, which makes you sad. I know it makes you sad when I don't give you my money. At least it should. And you know it makes me sad when you don't let me give you my money. I've said this before, Nintendo. Just a moment, please. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, this is unprofessional. Uh, just give me a second. This is the important stuff. Uh, and I and I, I, I text so slow, too. <sighs> and I also insist on correct grammar and punctuation in my texts. You know, I, I, I'm I'm that guy. Uh, it, it, it's it's terrible, honestly. Uh, I'm so slow. Okay, cool. Um, I just think, uh, you, you know, does Nintendo owe me anything? No. No. Uh, was I an early adopter of the Wii U? Yes. Did I buy all the awesome games for the Wii U? No. And no, there, there's a couple I, I, I didn't buy, like... Uh, I would have liked to try Yoshi's Woolly World. I don't know how well it played, but it certainly was cute. Uh, I think that's the one on the Wii U. The Yoshi's one that's on the Wii U. I think it's Woolly World. Um, the Paper Mario uh, Color Splash. I have some quibbles with what the design appears to be, but damn, those games are fun looking, aren't they? I, you know, I, I would have liked to try that too, but never got around to it. Uh, so yeah, there, there's a couple games that I did not um, uh, get on the Wii U, but... Uh, I got almost all the really good ones and almost all the really good ones from Nintendo specifically. So does Nintendo owe me? No. But, you know, I bought Captain Toad and uh, Tokyo Mirage Session Sharp FE and um, uh, Super Mario 3D World. 
they got to bank my monies and earn interest. Don't they owe me? No, no. But even though Nintendo doesn't owe me <laughs> anything, uh, it would be nice. Nintendo, it would be nice. Don't you want to be nice? I'm nice. I like being nice. I strive to be nice, which is why I didn't left, uh, leave my friend hanging for, you know, an hour while I'm doing a podcast. Because um, I'm nice, and I like being nice. You should like to be nice. And let me give you my money. I ain't giving you 60 bucks for content I've mostly already purchased from you, but I will happily give you some more of my money for new content. So, the Bowser's Fury content? Man, drop that on the eShop as a piece of download, uh, 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 standalone DLC for nice people like me who've been supporting you all along and bought the Wii U when nobody else would. <laughs> and it supported all the, those awesome games that you released and then are re-releasing now on the Switch, you know, the console that people actually bought. So, <sighs> but so far, alas, I will likely go my entire life without ever experiencing Bowser's Fury. Bummer. Siberian Tiger, hello. Uh, Siberian says, uh, Nintendo just doesn't drop prices on their games until they're well into the next console. And sometimes not even then. Uh, I kid you not, I literally, in the past week, uh, went onto the Wii U eShop once again to check to see if maybe Fatal Frame, whatever number that is, the, the Wii U Fatal Frame game, Curse of the maiden's long black hair in the moon or whatever the hell it's called um to see if it ever went on sale no no they're still selling it for full price as far unless i missed one but i'm pretty sure i didn't that game has never dropped in price not even like a special halloween promotion yeah take a couple bucks off for halloween no full price which is a shame because I would have liked to play it. I played the demo. I liked it. I, I didn't $50 like it, but I liked it and would have liked to pay more. I would have paid 20 bucks for the game. I might pay 30 for the game, but 50 mm, No. 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 It's a shame, because um, I'd like to play it. It looks cool. Looks twenty or thirty dollars cool. Not quite fifty dollars cool, but you know, twenty thirty plus tax. So yeah, Nintendo is very often loath to um, uh, drop the prices of its games. Yeah, uh, Tiger goes on. I worked retail, selling the Wii U is hard. The one question that kept popping up was, "Isn't this a Wii add-on or something?" You know, people outside the uh, video game industry, like, you know, parents who are just picking up a new console for the kids, and they're not into this stuff. They didn't watch the E3 presentation. Um, I could understand why they, oh, Wii U? Is that an add-on to the, to the Wii? Is it a like a tablet for the Wii? A Wii U? Is it the tablet the? You could see you could see where that comes from. But after a Nintendo Z3 presentation back in whenever that was, 2012, um, there were actual journalists who were like, "Is this a new console or is this a add-on for the Wii?" And I'm like, "It is." obviously a new console. I mean, 
notwithstanding the fact that Nintendo specifically said in its conference that you should have been paying attention to its new console and showed the actual console. Granted, the focus was on the tablet, but they did clearly say and show that it's a new console. If you're into the industry at all, and if you're, you know, a, a journalist covering, covering E3, I should certainly hope you are. Um, I mean, if you're new, hey. But look at the games. Just, just, just take a fraction of a second to glance quickly at footage of any of the Wii U games. And if you have any familiarity at all, if you don't, fine. You know, if you're just a parent buying stuff for your kids, fine. But if you have any familiarity at all, you would go, oh, well, that's definitely a new console because the Wii couldn't possibly do that. That's a compl- that is a complete generational jump ahead of what the Wii, the, the Wii could possibly do. So, yeah, I was, and still am. I'll admit, kind of frustrated with some people who I, perhaps wrongly, feel should know better. (laughs) Um, Dumb name. Not a helpful name. But so is we. We! We! (laughs) <laughs> God, that's a dumb name. I remember, you remember Perrin Kaplan, uh, one of the execs at, who used to, uh, one of the former Nintendo execs. Uh, I, fr- I, she said when describing where the name we uh, came from, um, I wish I would have copied that down somewhere because she's like, it's we because. And I, I don't remember what she said, but I remember my response was, yeah, then the name of the console would be us, <laughs> not we. And it's not very funny if you, do, if you don't remember or don't know what exactly she said, but her justification for the name we literally, grammatically does not work. It should have really been the way she described it's like, yeah, that would have been us. <laughs> but um whatever. Let's see, Tiger. Uh, let's see. D, 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 D. Uh, Tiger does not think they'll do it standalone. They want the full 60. Yeah. Yeah. I I I I agree. I don't think Nintendo will do it standalone. I think Nintendo looks at me and says, Andrew. You wonderful person, you. You wonderful gamer with a sparkling personality. You were there with us in the beginning. You bought the Wii U. You knew it was a new console. Because we told you. And you you were aware of the capabilities of the Wii. And you bought all the games. We love you. And so... When we port a game that you already bought, that you supported us, you were there in the beginning. We're bringing it to the Switch with new content, and we know you want to play it. But we know that you don't want to play through all the content that you already played through and already purchased. And so, that's what Nintendo says. In my mind. So. Uh... Sean says, what would I like to see Nintendo do for the 35th anniversary of Zelda? Uh, well, let's see, like 85. So, oh, okay, so that's this year, uh, or 86. Yeah, so that would be this year. Hmm. Um, I, I'm curious to see what Breath of the Wild 2 turns out to be. I mean, make Bowser's Fury and the rest of the uh, additional content they added to all the Wii U games available as purchasable standalone DLC. That's what I'd like them to do for Link's 35th. That has almost nothing to do with (laughs) with The Legend of Zelda, but, you know, I'd be happy with it. Um, 
Uh, Tiger says Majora's Mask on the Switch. I'm so close to getting it on the 3DS. Um, sure. I mean, I mean, I already have Majora's Mask on the N64, which is sitting right there. the The N64 Majora's Mask is in my uh, is in one of my dresser drawers with the rest of my uh, N64 games. And man, I, I tell you. Majora's Mask came close to being my favorite Zelda game, but I personally feel it drops the ball in the back half of the game in a, in a couple uh, major ways. Still love that game. Such a great game, but it's not as... it For me, it dropped the ball in a couple key areas. Uh, it's got uh, The third dungeon boss is terrible. I mean, just utterly obnoxiously bad. Um, the... Uh, the Zora, the, the, the whole the Zora concert thing was such a huge letdown. The way that was done, um, the last dungeon. I know a lot of people really love that last dungeon. I didn't care for it, and I felt that the uh, the final boss encounter was lame. Visually interesting, but I mean. If you play the game like me and you've done all the side stories and you become like Uber Link or Oni Link or whatever, you just immediately destroy uh, uh, Majora. So, um, still a good, not a, not a bad game, but uh, it just let me down in a few places in the end. And um, Majora's Mask is still really great, though. I really like it. Man, uh, some of the movement in that game is just in and of itself so much fun. Like, uh, <clears throat> getting the um uh the 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 goron spinny wheel of death <laughs> that that's so much fun swimming as a zora i i don't think has ever been matched in any of the subsequent uh zelda games uh feel so good but uh yeah great game overall uh if they remade it would i uh purchase it on the switch no because i don't let me clarify that if it's a remake in the sa in the same vein of like the the Resident Evil two and three remakes or uh, Final Fantasy seven, a complete remake, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But if it's just um, you know uh, a new coat of paint type of remake, more more of a remaster, uh, no. Like uh, Wind Waker, great game. Um, did I buy it on the Wii U? No. Because I already had it on the GameCube and I already beat it. They added a couple little things, mostly quality of life improvements. I mean, it looked better. It's a, you know, ran in a higher resolution. I think they put it in widescreen. Looks gorgeous. Um, they added like a quick sail to the boat. Oh my God, that would be so great. I think they streamlined the uh, Triforce fetch quest at the end. You know, a couple things like that. And that's great. But... Uh, for all intents and purposes, same exact game. I rarely will replay a game. I have before. There's been a few cases where I've replayed a game just because I wanted to play through the game again. Um, but uh, <clears throat> unless you are truly remaking the game, not just you know remastering or anything, or maybe a better a, a word might be reimagining the game. Uh, then, yo, oh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, let's see. D -d 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 -d. Let's see. Do -do -do. Uh, Siberian Tiger. I think if they just called it We Two or something, I might have helped. But I had no knowledge in the market. Um, yeah, we we use a dumb name. We Two. I think yeah, because I don't think anyone has ever. It's like PS Five is. Is that an add-on for the PS4, or is it a new con? Yes, yeah, no one does that. On the other hand, no one said Xbox 360. Okay, so is that a add-on to the Xbox, or is this a new X? On the other hand, there are some people who are getting completely confused with Xbox One, Xbox One X, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S. That, yeah, that, so Microsoft's not doing themselves any favors either, but um, yeah. Uh, uh, 
Tiger got uh, got moderated there. Let's see. There were uh, so many dick jokes when the name was like, yeah, yeah, it, it was an odd. It, it was weird. It's like, uh, Nintendo, did you not Google Wii? And it's like, I mean, it's a name for penis or urinating. It also means small in the sense of insignificant. Are, are you sure this is the name you want to go with? I mean, they did a little bit better with Switch, which um, does have sexual connotations, which I honestly did not know. But uh, yeah, Google it. I'd say that that one's okay. It's it's switch as a um, as a sexual uh, terminology is fairly obscure to most, I think. But even small children associate we with uh, male genitalia and urinating and small and insignificant things. So, odd choice for a name. Maybe they should have just gone with Dolphin or whatever. No, Dolphin was GameCube, right? What was the uh, what was the code name for Wii? It was like Star something or something. If you remember the code names, Revolution. That's that's right, Tiger. Thank you. Um, Uh, MX, your PC has a recovery error. I'm sorry to hear that. Mine's still dead. Still trying to source a CPU and GPU. I may have to buckle down and just get a you know, try try for a different CPU and GPU. I, but super, this is like the busy time at work, so I haven't really taken the time to research what I might uh, get in lieu of the parts I already picked out. Because I'd need parts that are that would work with all the stuff I already have, which is not in shot. It's behind my couch. Um, so I already have like, you know, the, the motherboard and, and the power supply and stuff. So whatever I get, I need to make sure it would work with those, which takes, you know, time out my day. So don't worry about that. Maybe. Uh, okay. Tiger. I have the cartridge for Majora's mask, but the console is long gone. Oh, Okay. Well, then there's, if you want to play it again, there's a good reason to hope for a, a new port. Um, a, Tiger agrees that the movement in Majora's Mask is wonderful. Uh, Tiger says, I think we should start defining words remake and HD. Yeah, th th there's like um, remaster, remake, reimagining, reissue, I guess. Uh, um. They, they do get kind of muddled because marketing does not care. <laughs> whatever whatever they think sounds best and sells best is what they'll use regardless of how appropriate or accurate it, it uh, may come off. So <clears throat> I actually had an idea of a video where I talked about uh, what I thought, you know, the dividing lines for the different re's, you know, uh, uh, reissue, re make re uh, reimagining you know the, all the re's so um uh majora's mask uh kageneko sama yes majora's mask was uh like ocarina of time was remade for the uh, 3ds yes um and tiger confirmed that <laughs> tiger says i agree i love my xbox but damn it microsoft just use numbers please <laughs> yeah Uh, Kageneko Sama says, I know the term switch, but still won't relate it to the bad meaning since most of them are normal. Yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't mean anything, you know, bad, but it, it does have its sexual connotation. But then again, almost any word you could pick, if you dig deep enough, you'll find a sexual connotation from it. Yeah, you know, it's like coming in 2023 the nintendo eggplant it's like um might want to rethink that i'm i'm actually kind of amazed that uh you know super smash brothers didn't use like let's smash as a tagline or even as a joke in one commercial just because i totally would have because i'm incredibly immature um
Uh, Siberian Tiger says Tony Hawk HD was a remake from the ground up. Man, that was a rough game. It's it's an interesting. Um, it's an interesting case study, because uh, however you would define the various terms you're a lot of times going to find a game that somehow straddles the line wherever you draw them. So it was an interesting project. I just never got around to it. Uh, the, the video talking about that kind of thing, I just never got around to. I outlined it. I never scripted it. <laughs> Super Smash Bros. sounds like a porn company. <laughs> um, it's, it's probably at least a website. Um, <clears throat> all right. So let's see. Uh, derp, 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 derp. where am I in my list? Okay, so um, let's talk about Juan Division, the uh, the new Marvel MCU Disney Plus superhero television show extravaganza, of which there are only two episodes so far now. For those of you worried about spoilers, do not worry. Do not worry because I will not be spoiling WandaVision. Because I can't, because nothing happens in the first two episodes. Let me refine my assertion. If you have seen marketing for WandaVision, if you've seen like a trailer for the show, if you know the general premise of the show, you are not going to learn any new real information by watching the first two episodes. So there's really nothing I could spoil other than like specific jokes or the plots of the first two episodes. Um, there is a detail that if you are looking for it, you might spot here and there. That might be considered a spoiler. So I will not touch on that. <clears throat> Let me move my uh, thing out of the way of the chat so I can actually read it. Okay. Uh... Siberian says, you got banger, brothers. Don't ask me how I know that. Uh, I'm pure of mind, to honest. I, You know, my favorite movie is uh, Ghostbusters, the original from 1984. It's my favorite movie. Is it the best movie? No, but it's my favorite. Um, I happen to know that several years ago, at least, uh, they made a porn parody of Ghostbusters. If I ever buy a porno, probably going to be that one, because I admit, I kind of want to see it. <laughs> it's probably terrible, but, um, I, you know, it's Ghostbusters, so I have to admit, genuinely curious. <clears throat> what are we talking about? WandaVision, WandaVision, yes. Um... I don't know what email list I or I get um, I get advertisements for pornography stuff in the meal in the in my email on occasion. I can think of two reasons why that might be. Number one, I used to subscribe to a newsletter to a site that I don't remember that it was DVD something and it was a site that talked about new dvd releases um this site had many different um categories of dvd one of which was adult film uh which they you know kept separate because some people don't want to hear about that stuff uh so when i subs i don't remember i'm not a mailing list kind of guy so I, I probably had an account or something and they just signed me up to their mailing list which signed me up to all their mailing lists which included the adult stuff which is mostly how i learned about all the funny porn parodies including ghostbusters um 
and there have been a lot of porn parodies of superhero uh, movies in the past years, last decade. And I got to say, I haven't seen the movies, but just from the, unless they're lying with the, you know, the, the cover art for the show, uh, they're, the porno parodies get a lot closer to the comic book costumes than some of the movies do, which is kind of funny. Anyway, uh, the other thing I did is a couple of years ago, I did a, uh, my idea was to do an April Fool's joke where I would do 30 days of porno. And each day I'd watch a new, watch and review a new porn movie. And day one was April 1st, April Fool's Day. I was only going to do one because honestly, I did not want to do that for an entire month. Uh, so I uh, bought us a, a trial subscription, which was like, because they never have free subscription, but it's like a three day trial subscription for like $3. So I could watch one movie, review it. Ha ha, funny joke. Andrew's taking a porno movie really, really seriously. Uh, whole sh That video's on YouTube. It didn't go the way I thought it would. Watch that at your own risk. But, um, but I think uh, signing up to that site signed me up to a million other mailing lists. So... Now I get, a, now I get, you know, there were the, the adult movie awards show thing at like this month. And I got emailed a list of winners. And I was like, great. What, what, the one thing I found funny was um, uh, it was the nominations list. And uh, there, there were several, one of the categories was best scene. And I imagine it's best scene of, people having sex and um I, I was reading the list to see if there were any really funny categories and i got down to where it says best scene and the nominees were uh this person and this person for this scene this person and this person for this scene this person this i'm like okay that, that makes sense but then one of them was this person this person this person <laughs> there's like seven or eight people in one scene i'm like whoa ambitious one year I was going to do it because a lot of people do, you know, reactions to um, like the Oscars and stuff like that. And I just don't care. I thought it would be kind of funny to do like a reaction video to one of the adult awards. And the year I was going to do it, I looked at whatever award show I was looking at. They had, I think, like 86 categories. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm not doing that. That would be like six hours. No, it's it's not six hours. It would be kind of funny for like two minutes, but I'm not doing it for six hours. At some point, I'm actually going to get around to talking about WandaVision, I'm, I'm sure. Um, why talk about WandaVision when you can talk about porn? Um, so today, I got an email advertising um, an adult website that is a subscription website Adults are us, uh, something, I don't know, whatever it's called. Um, time to adult, you know, let's adult, adults away, something, I don't know. Um, but it's a, it's a video subscription site where you subscribe to watch videos of people having sex. And their big advertisement, which hit my mailbox today, was now we have animated porn. And I'm an animation junkie. And I have to admit, I was kind of curious. Um, I'm like, oh man, that's... Is it any good? Like, Because it's all, as far as I could tell just from the advert that I was emailed, it was all 3D animation. And they have like like five different fully 3D... An or what, what appears from the advertisement to be like five completely different fully 3D animated shows. And some of the character models look a little janky. Um, and I, I, I clicked through to see if it had any like preview clips just to get an idea of what the animation was like. And uh, for some reason, I, I did find some preview clips. And for some reason, it had no sound, which I thought was weird. Because I could tell in the preview clips, they were really proud of their vocal cast. Because it's like, we got actual real adult performers to voice the characters in this 3d animated porn cartoon thing i'm like great why does this clip have no sound because <laughs> it showed like behind the scenes clip of 
people who I assume are famous porn peoples, you know, in the in the uh, recording booth, you know, going uh 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 or whatever the dialogue is, and um, so the animation, so so the, uh, the the character modeling is not horrible, but kind of uncanny valley ish. I like. Most of them seem to be going. Seem to understand that we don't have the time or budget to produce a fully animated porno with, you know, really realistic uh, 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 characters. So we're gonna have to do uh, characterizations. We're gonna. It's gonna have to be very stylized. So the uncanny valleyness is not as off-putting. Um, from what I saw, I would still go a little bit more into the stylization because it's still just a little off-putting. But, uh, you know, if I were, like, rich, I, I'd here have some money. I'm, I'm not... Show me your 3D animated porn. I'm genuinely curious. But, um, yeah, I just got my... Uh, a tax document for uh, how much I received in unemployment benefits this year. And uh, I'm looking at that. I'm going, great. How much do you want back? <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid to do my taxes. I'm like, I'm going to owe so that much money. It's like, hey, we, we got you all these uh, UI benefits for the year. It's like, great. Yeah, you owe $3,500 after doing your taxes. No. So I don't know yet. I haven't, I haven't done my taxes, but uh, not, not really looking forward to it because I've never, because uh, this is the first year I've uh, 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 participated in the, uh, the, the, the unemployment benefits program. So uh, we shall see. Uh, let's see. Sean says they made a porn parody of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Huh. And Sean goes on to say that was an interesting one. Yeah, I'm. Did did they did they have like full costumes like in the movie, or did they just like paint actors green? Yeah, and put and put colored bandanas on. It's like hey, whatever, close enough. Um, there's a porn parody of Monsters Inc. Oh, Pixar porn. I'm I'm sure that's a cottage industry. Lindy says, I wonder if they show a snippet for each nomination of best scene. Oh, for the uh, the adult film awards or whatever it is. Um, the, the, uh, the notification I got this week, I think it was, uh, went to a website that just listed the nominees and then I think the winner was highlighted. I don't recall if any of them were like th th there. There was there were no video previews on the page, and I don't recall any of them being like hyperlinked to anything. But um, I, you have to wonder. It's like, man, is there actually an awards show with the actors sitting in the audience, and they're like, for best scene, this person, this person. Let's see a clip. <laughs> And then the cameras pans, press the person, the audience going, yeah, that's me. That's my good side. <laughs> you know, I, I wonder even for adult actors, if that would be just kind of awkward. I don't know. I'm kind of curious though. I, I don't know if they do like a full award show or if they just, um, they just people vote and then they release the uh, the list of uh, winners and then mail a trophy or something. I honestly don't know. So let's see. Uh, da -da 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 -da, Kagane Kasama says old motion capture games and movies really look uncanny uh, to today's standards, and they were AAA, so I can imagine how bad an adult CGI movie would look. Um, from the clips I saw, it looked better than I would have assumed without seeing anything, but. Yeah, I mean it's not great. It's obviously something that's there's there's definitely some talent behind because the modeling it looks a little uncanny, but it's fairly solid. It's mainly the design work I take uh, issue with. Um, 
And some of the actual animation, at least the soundless animation that I saw, was uh, it's okay. You know, it didn't didn't look horrible. It didn't look great. I mean, it's obviously done on a budget and on a time schedule. Without getting too disgusting, I, I will say that the um, how can I say this without being disgusting? My lovely animators who I'm sure work very hard on these adult 3D animated films. Uh, I can tell that you have passion for the project. I can tell that you are, uh, you have talent in animation. And I know that you don't have the budget or the time to show us your best work. Having said all that, You really need to work on your fluid simulations. Just, just gonna leave that there. So, uh, da, 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 Sean says no full costumes with big green wees. <laughs> full costumes with big green wees, lovely. Uh, Bucky says, Andrew, so sorry I missed you. Well, um, I'm, I'm still here. Uh, Ah, oh, well, that that's uh, no problem. These get archived so you can watch from the beginning later. Uh, so let me try to actually talk about WandaVision because it's... I mentioned, uh, I think, earlier in the week. <clears throat> the From the previews and from the marketing material, it was clear that WandaVision was going to be presented as a 50s, 60s era sitcom. Or uh, at least would be presented as a sitcom from several different eras. Like the first episode would be 50s era, and then the next episode would be 60s era, and they would be kind of like what the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. did uh, in its final season where they were doing a time travel thing. So when they were in the 50s, it was kind of a, black and white noir kind of thing and then they moved to the 70s it was all disco and then they moved to an 80s neon adventure thing and it, you know that kind of a thing uh so it's presented as a uh, television sitcom starring uh, wanda and vision okay cool certainly an interesting idea um here was my concern generally speaking i don't like sitcoms i don't hate them i mean I don't run out of the house and, you know, scream to the heavens, shaking my fist, his sitcoms, but I generally don't enjoy them. Like I did a debut review for a sitcom that uh, everyone really seems to love and Netflix keeps canceling and they get all pissy because it's a great show. I think it's called uh, One Day at a Time, I, th I think is the name of the show. And uh, unfortunately, I think it actually got canceled. Um, so I did a debut review for the first episode and I don't like it. I mean, it's not a bad show. I just don't like sitcoms. There's there's something about the style and format that just doesn't click with me. Um, I can admire sitcoms, um, but yeah, the, I can't think of a single sitcom that I actually genuinely enjoy. Um, <clears throat> so I was wondering, that being the case, would, uh, if uh, WandaVision uh, commits too heavily to the format of a sitcom, would I still enjoy it? Or would I find it difficult to sit through? Well, uh, you may be, um, <laughs> Siberian Tiger quote, you really need to work on your fluid simulations, Andrew, the professional 3D porn reviewer. <laughs> yeah. Um, WandaVision uh, is not a parody of classic sitcoms it is a classic sitcom um, uh, it's uh, shot at least the first episodes are uh, shot in black and white four by three uh, they even bring the uh, the soundscape down a little bit narrower um, uh, they do a really nice thing where it starts with the Marvel logo thing, da, 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 with the page, the comic book page flippy thing, and it starts, 
And then it brings into a four by three presentation and the sound draw. It's still stereo, but th they, they narrow the sonic range to make it sound closer to mononogural and more tinny. Um, so it's a nice touch. And, and they just saturated and the color out until it's black and white. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's a, uh, it's a set. Uh, it, it's a multi-camera setup. Uh, the the, the um, presentation is, is the same. There's uh, there's commercial breaks. Well, there's a commercial break with a commercial, um, you know, from Stark Industries. Here's a toaster. Um, uh, there there's a laugh track. In fact, I would not be surprised at all if, depending on when uh, WandaVision was actually shot, they may have actually done this in front of a studio audience, which which I hope they did. That, that sounds hilarious. Um, uh, the way the actors perform are very of the time, you know, that, that very broad uh, in the, the way they, their mannerisms, gesticulations and the way they speak and the dialogue and the type of humor. Um, so it does a really nice job. It, again, it's not parroting uh, this stuff. It just is that. And I'll be honest, I've, I found it kind of hard to sit through. <laughs> I was getting a little antsy, was constantly shifting from cheek to cheek, because I just don't like sit. I just don't care for sitcoms. They don't do it for me. Um, however, if you like sitcoms, you'll like this. It's a, it's a, it's good. I mean, it's really well done. It's uh, smartly executed. Uh, the actors are all really phenomenal. Uh, Olsen's great. Uh, Paul Bettany, I had never seen him do broadly uh, phys comic and physical comedy stuff, and he's uh, wonderful at it. Um, uh, Catherine Hahn, I think her name is, is the you know the nosy next door neighbor who keeps walking in, whether she's asked to or invited or not. Uh, she's wonderful, um, but at the end of the day, the first two episodes are. I, I mean, there, there's a couple, something is not right here, you know, uh, but uh, for the most part, they're just sitcoms and yeah, I found it a little difficult to sit through. That said, I will keep watching the show because I'm genuinely interested in where they're going because I don't know. There's, again, if you have a keen eye, you know, at least one element of Marvel history that's going to be in there. But um, for the most part, it's like I can think of like three perfectly plausible scenarios that could potentially be going on. And I'm interested to see if one of those three are it or if it's something I didn't think of. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, WandaVision is uh, off to a strong start. I, I don't think it's as weird and Lynchian as some people are making it out to be. Although some people have seen the third episode and I have not. So, uh, mileage may vary i'll let you know next week but uh i also uh, some of my uh, facebook buddies were uh wondering do i need to watch any of the other marvel movies i'm kind of interested in wandavision but like the last movie i saw was iron man <laughs> or something and it's like I, I, how many of these do i have to watch um so if you're wondering none just listen to the lyrics of the opening theme song for WandaVision. Oh, yes, there's a theme song. It's pretty great. Uh, that tells you pretty much all you need to know. Now, uh, if you really want to get a little bit of background in Wanda and Vision specifically, um, you know, uh, Infinity War and Endgame, the big ones, probably watch those because that will give you a touchstone for where the characters last left off, which I, I imagine will at least one of the, one of the, the way one of the characters left off is certainly going to come up at some point during the show. Um, <clears throat> but uh, you don't have to watch all the Marvel movies. If you want the ones with uh, Mar uh, vision and Scarlet, Witch, it's a uh, Avengers Two, civil war and a Infinity War and Endgame. And that's it. You don't need to see the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, although I'd recommend them. 
You don't need to see Black Panther, although I'd very much recommend it. Uh, you don't need to see Ragnarok. I'd very much recommend that one, too. They're really good. But, um, yeah, don't feel like you have to watch 18 different movies. You don't. If you just want the backstory in these characters, at most it's four. You'd, you'd be fine with two. Honestly, the, the, the show gives you enough information to understand the characters, at least from the first two episodes. You can just watch it cold. It's fine. So, uh, ba, 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 ba. <clears throat> so that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's WandaVision. It's, uh, it's a sitcom. I don't like sitcoms. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to break out of the format at, at some point or if it's really just going to be a, a new era of sitcom every single episode. <laughs> but luckily, uh, like a sitcom, uh, the individual episodes of WandaVision are only half an hour long. Uh, granted, an actual sitcom would be be probably closer to like 21, 22 minutes with, you know, three commercial breaks. And this only has one fake commercial break with one fake commercial per episode. And even then, I think the first episode's like 27 minutes and the second one's 30. Um, so so they're a little longer than what an actual uh, sitcom would be, but eh. Um, Oh, also the effects in the show are set up to be era appropriate. So when uh, Scarlet Witch, uh, Wanda does her powers to levitate stuff because she's, you know, the boss comes, Vision's boss comes over for dinner because he needs the promotion. So, oh no, Wanda needs to make a dinner and she didn't prepare anything. So she does her Wanda stuff and... You know, dishes come flying out of the uh, the cupboard on their own because she's magic, and um, that's all. What it appears to to be is uh, you know objects on a string, like they actually would have done if this were shot in the late fifties. So that's a nice touch too. Um, oh, and all uh, stuff like uh, quick changes where she's like, "Oh no, I'm wearing the wrong outfit," yeah, you know, and she changes her clothes. They're not doing a CGI wipe or warp or anything. They're literally having the, you know, Paul Bettany stand there and hold that pose for probably five minutes while Elizabeth Olsen <laughs> ran off stage, changed her clothes, and came back to her mark. And then they, you know, resume, you know, it's, it's just a, a, a splice in the edit. Um, so uh, that's fun to see. I mean, I, I don't hate it, but. The uh, the sitcom format's just something that's never sat with me. So I, I did get a little antsy during the episodes, but overall I enjoyed it. They are they are genuinely funny and charming, and uh, production wise, uh, production and performance wise, just really well done. So um, uh, yeah, so uh, Disney Plus's uh, their fluid simulations are fine. Um, there were i don't think there were any fluid simulations but that joke didn't work at all forget it all right uh what do i want to talk about now nothing because it's eight o'clock and that's the uh that's the end of the podcast so um i hope you enjoyed uh listening to me muse mostly about porn um because that's always an entertaining topic because let's face it Sex is funny. Uh, a Siberian Tiger says, kind of gave up on the subscriptions. They were chipping away at my wallet. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I'm fortunate enough to be able to uh, afford a couple. Uh, like, I have, uh, I have Disney Plus, because I really want to see the Marvel stuff. And I have... Um, uh, Shutter, which because I'm a big horror fan, and I have uh, Criterion because. Um, in fact, I, I actually watched a couple things from Criterion. I watched a Manchurian Candidate last night. Uh, one of the one of the films I 
just had never gotten around to see until now. So uh, it's, it's, that's a, that's a pretty great one to, if for those with very eclectic taste in film, I think, um, cause, cause Criterion Collection has a very broad swath of uh, films in different genres from different eras, from different countries. There's just a lot of varied stuff in that collection. So I really enjoy that. Um, <clears throat> Tiger says, I mean, I, I get why people like it, but if I buy uh, a movie or game, well, I can I can keep it even if I'm looking down the barrel of bankruptcy. Yeah, I like uh, I like owning my stuff. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's it out, out of me for this week. Uh, thanks for uh, hanging out. Uh, hope your weekend is going peachy and uh, continues to do so. So stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, and I'll see y'all next week. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Mm,